Hey folks, this is Mr. Woodward. In this video, we're going to talk about Newton's third law of motion. And to start, I'm going to recap his three laws of motion, his famous three laws of motion. So Newton's first law of motion is the law of inertia. And inertia basically states that objects resist accelerating and they prefer to move at constant velocity, including rest, which would be a velocity of zero. And when they are moving at a non-zero constant velocity, they will move in a straight line. Okay, that's the law of inertia. Newton's second law of motion is a law that relates the net force on an object to its mass and its acceleration. And it's famously written uh, like this, the net force equals the product of mass and acceleration. Or you can rearrange it and solve for the acceleration and say that the acceleration is directly proportional to the net force on an object and inversely proportional to the mass of the object. So the acceleration of an object is always the ratio of the net force on it uh, to its mass. So the, the more force you put on an object, it's more, the more it's gonna accelerate. The more mass of an object is, the less it's gonna accelerate, right? Which actually relates back to the, um, the first concept of inertia, right? Objects with more mass have more inertia and are going to be even more resistant to accelerating. And now it's time for Newton's third law of motion, which is the law of action-reaction. It's stated commonly this way, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction, which means that the force of one object to a second object is going to be equal to the force of the second object on the first object, but just in opposite directions, right? And that's written by this sort of silly little equation here. But basically, um, if, uh, if I were to, you know, uh, hit you in the shoulder with a force, uh, your shoulder would hit me with the same force in the opposite direction. So you can't hit without being hit back. Forces always come in pairs. There's no such thing as a solitary force. Um, so every, uh, every applied force on one object is coupled with an applied force uh, in the opposite direction on the other object, okay? And by the way, those forces do not cancel each other out because they're on uh, opposite, they're on different objects. If the forces were on the same object, they would cancel each other out, but they're on different objects, so they don't cancel. So let's explore um, this third law in detail um, with, the, with the idea of like how do objects interact with these forces, with these action and reaction forces. And we're going to learn to draw something um, called an interaction diagram. You're probably not going to see this in most textbooks, um, but it does help us to eventually draw the free body diagrams of all objects that are interacting um, in a specific scenario. Isaac Newton thought a lot about what he observed in nature and developed theories or laws of motion to explain and predict what he observed. For instance, one famous story is that he developed a theory of gravity by watching an apple fall from a tree, right? And so here's that apple falling down. Let's use this th the same thought of experiment of an apple falling from a tree to reach some of Newton's amazing insights into, into the universe. We'll ignore the air resistance that comes from the repulsion between the air's outer electrons and the apple's outer electrons. So here we go, draw an interaction diagram for the apple and the earth as the apple falls to the ground. So an interaction diagram just labels um, the interactive forces between two objects. So the apple and the earth are not touching, it's just falling to the ground, and they are interacting through one force, um, the force of gravity. So I'm just gonna draw a connecting line between the apple and the earth. Now this force of gravity represents, excuse me, this interaction of gravity represents two forces. There's a gravity pull on the apple and a gravity pull on the earth. And we can see that in the free body diagrams, okay? So a free body diagram of the apple would just have this downward pull of gravity and it's gonna be from the earth. But we could also draw a free body diagram of the earth and the earth would be pulled upwards by the force of gravity from the apple. This is what we mean when we say every action has an equal and opposite reaction. These forces, this, this interaction of gravity comes in pairs, a pair of forces. And then some conceptual questions. Which object is pulled with more force, the apple 
or the Earth. And we would say the forces are actually equal. This is what Newton's third law is saying. Why isn't the Earth moving up towards the apple then? Because even though the forces are equal, the masses are not equal. The mass of the Earth is huge compared to the mass of the apple. So this little gravitational force uh, of the apple on the Earth is not going to be nearly enough to move the Earth. So the Earth is too massive. And how does this demonstrate Newton's third law? Well, the forces are equal and opposite. Forces are equal and opposite. Let's keep moving. What if now the apple is sitting at rest on the ground? Let's draw an interaction diagram for the apple and the earth as the apple sits on the ground, right? So now we've got the surface of the earth right here. The apple is still going to be interacting with the earth through gravity, but now there is an additional interaction it is the normal force. So let's add that because they are now in contact, right? A normal force is a contact force. Draw a free body diagram now. So the apple is still being pulled down by the force of gravity from the earth. But the apple is also being supported upwards by a normal force from the earth. The Earth is applying two forces to the apple. And then um, equal and opposite to those are the forces on the Earth. So now the Earth is going to be pulled up from a gravitational interaction with the apple. But since the apple is sitting on top of the Earth, right, the apple wants to move down because of the force of gravity, but then there's this, there's this support force upwards. So the Earth is actually going to be pushed down by a normal force from the apple, right? Imagine that you're the earth, you would feel the apple sitting on you, pushing down on you. And how does this demonstrate Newton's third law? Uh, well, again, the, for, every, uh, for every force, there's a paired force, right? So every force has an equal and opposite pair. Every force has an equal and opposite pair. And what I mean by that is um, these are force pairs here, and these are force pairs here. Okay? They're paired up. Let's keep going. 